let's get into it now. A spoiler-free movie review of The Fall Guy. Have a bit of a bias going into this review because I'm a huge Ryan Gosling fan. Drive has been one of my top 10 movies for as long as I can remember. Whenever I go back and retool what my top 10 of all time is, I feel like that one still makes the list because he is just such a great, versatile actor. And he is somebody that I just count on to show me a different side of him in every single movie. He's coming off Barbie, which was massive for him. Now going into The Fall Guy, I was still all team Ryan Gosling when it comes to the two Ryans that some people always confuse. And sometimes I'll probably even say the wrong name on this podcast, Gosling and Reynolds. I'm much more on the Gosling side. I just think he has more of a range. And The Fall Guy really proved that to me even more than anything else he's done before. And I thought it was interesting him talking about in interviews for this movie saying that he will no longer do a movie that'll put him in a bad headspace, which I found really interesting because I always wonder how much a movie role affects an actor. If you're doing something so dark and really getting into your character, spending so much time learning about them and trying to think how they would act in certain situations, does that really take a toll on your emotional state? When he takes on movies now, he thinks about how it's going to affect his family And if it's going to take him there, he won't take on the role. So it is interesting to see how his career has shifted in the last five years. He's also doing fewer films. Back in the 2010s, I feel like he was in a new movie every single year. In the last five years, I think he's done three movies, but they've all been big, massive movies. So he is still that reigning movie star. So what the movie is about, Ryan Gosling plays a stuntman who leaves the business after a bad accident. He is completely out of the game, but then goes back to work on a movie directed by his ex, played by Emily Blunt, and he is kind of put in charge of finding the star of her movie because the star has gone missing. And this movie is a big action movie, Emily Blunt's character, directorial debut, so she has a lot of her career riding on this movie, riding on finding this missing star. And the star of this movie is kind of somebody who resembles Tom Cruise. They make a lot of references to Tom Cruise, so I have to assume... And maybe a lot of this movie is based on how Tom Cruise really is on set, maybe. Doesn't really have to be the case here. Maybe they loosely based it on some stories because I think a big part of enjoying this movie is knowing director David Leach's story, who was a stuntman for 20 years. He was working as a stuntman in the late 90s, but more specifically, he was Brad Pitt's stuntman in movies like Fight Club, The Mexican, and Ocean's Eleven. And that is where he got his start. So this movie is a love letter to stuntmen, the unsung hero, if you will, of the movie industry, because they are the ones oftentimes doing all of these things that you don't really see their face for. You're not supposed to see their face for, and they don't really get a whole lot of credit. And that is what this movie story sets out to prove. And David Leach went from being a stuntman to being a producer. He worked as a co-director on the John Wick movie, so that is very much his style. He worked on Captain America Civil War, if you remember the airport fight scene from that movie, which was epic. That was David Leach, and he went on to direct movies like Bullet Train, where he got to direct the person that he used to be the stuntman for, Brad Pitt. He also directed Atomic Blonde and Deadpool 2, so that is kind of his style, which Deadpool 2 also had a Brad Pitt cameo. So he really has a knack for action, and action sequences are his specialty, So it was cool seeing him get to make a movie that was so personal. And I think that's really important to know going into this movie because it feels very unorthodox at times. This movie felt a little bit weird in the beginning because I was expecting a full-on action movie. And that is really what the trailer kind of played it off to be. It was going to be a movie about a movie focused on the stunt work of a movie. And the first better half of the movie, maybe the first 30 minutes, really didn't feel like an action movie at all. It felt like a rom-com, which was not what I was expecting. The story of Emily Blunt's character and Ryan Gosling's character and their relationship history of being together early on in the movie, him going away for a year and not speaking to her, and then going out to Australia to be a part of her movie, and the awkwardness of encountering your ex and then having to work together was very much at the forefront of this movie. So when you break down all of the acts of this movie, it felt like a lot of different genres worked into one. The first act of the movie was that rom-com 
Then we got a little bit more into a drama slash mystery. And then the final act of the movie is full on action movie. And what ends up happening is the movie becomes really meta because if you're making a movie about a movie by people who have worked in the industry and you have other people playing producers and it feels very much in the weeds at times of the movie making process, you kind of have to get used to it. It reminds me of whenever I would go and swim in a body of water that was way too cold and you think there's no way that I'm going to feel comfortable in this. And you see other people out in the water, like how are they swimming in this? It is so freezing. But eventually, if you allow yourself to sit there for a while, you get used to it, your body temperature starts to regulate, and then you are comfortable in that water. Going from thinking, ah, there's no way I'm gonna feel comfortable, I wanna get out immediately. And then you kind of live in it, and you sit in it, and you think, ah, this actually feels really good. I'm glad I got to this point. That is how I felt because it felt a little bit empty at times and almost like a Saturday Night Live sketch in the beginning when it was really going for comedy. And I was like, what exactly are they doing here? The dialogue feels a little clunky and I didn't really get the dynamic they were going for between Emily Blunt and Ryan Gosling. But then as the story moves along and it kind of shifts genres a little bit and you get more invested in the characters and then the action ramps up. And the thing I loved about it, as the action is ramping up, there are parts of it that have to do with the stunts Ryan Gosling's character has to do as the stunt performer working on the movie. But then there are these other stunts that he is doing that are a part of the other storyline of him trying to find the A-list actor who has gone missing. So it's just him out doing stunts in the quote-unquote real world, not on the movie set. So I liked the correlation between the two and how you just kind of assume like, oh, he is just an awesome character. Not only can he do these on a movie set, but he can do these in the real world and you don't really question it. And he kind of feels like a superhero at times. I just thought it was cool how it goes back and forth between that. And it all works together really nicely because at times when they are talking about things they want to get right on the movie, there's one scene in particular where they want to get this car roll done and have it flip a certain amount of times to be a record so it looks really good on the movie and that shot is important to the trailer that they want to show at comic-con that same flip was actually a guinness world record in the real world so not just what they did in the movie the fall guy actually has that record because they were able to do it so again very meta at times so once you get used to the format once you get a little bit more invested in the characters this movie becomes really enjoyable so I'm really glad I watched this movie in theaters. It worries me though, because with a movie like that, with our attention spans, I wonder what it's going to be like to people who just watch this movie on streaming. Because I'm not entirely sold in the first 20 minutes of this movie, and I talk about a lot on this podcast, how those first 20 minutes are so crucial to a movie. And it's a lot different when you go watch one in theaters and watch one at home because you're already there in the theater, you're not going to leave unless it's so blatantly bad. It takes a lot to walk out of a movie, but when you watch a movie at home, if you're not sucked in in those first 20 minutes and you think, do I really wanna watch this? It's two hours long. Do I wanna sit here or, just, or do I just wanna skip on to something else? That's a lot harder to do. And that is why completion rate is so crucial when it comes to Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus, and all those services. So it is a bit of an investment because it feels so different, but I ended up loving the fact that it felt like an unfamiliar format because that is what this movie needed to do. And yes, it is based on a TV show from back in the day, but it doesn't really feel like a remake of any sorts. It's not a TV show I was that familiar with. So it doesn't really have that same feeling, oh, they're just throwing out another remake right now because I feel like nothing really correlates with what happened in that show and what happens in this movie. There are also just a lot of little inside jokes that are self-contained within the movie. So if you're watching as the viewer, there are little things you pick up on, little quirks from the characters that pay off later in the movie. And I thought that was a nice touch. There were a lot of little inside bits that were treats for everybody watching the movie. There's one in particular of Ryan Gosling's character just wanting to have a cup of coffee and can never get a cup of coffee. So you have to watch the movie to find out, does he get this cup of coffee? Again, a little dumb little bit, but it was this nice little touch that showed me that they had attention to detail 
and were not only focused on the action of this movie, but also focused on the comedy. The other interesting part of this movie, it's the second major movie that I've seen filmed in Australia in the last year. The one before this was Anyone But You with Sidney Sweeney and Glenn Powell, that rom-com movie. And now The Fall Guy was also shot in Australia. And I found that Australia has some filming incentives right now. They're trying to get more people to film there. So the same way that a lot of Hollywood movies are filmed in Canada, because they have filming incentives there, it's cheaper to film there, you get some tax breaks. So I think Australia is a really good backdrop for a movie like this. I love all the scenes of the action happening on the beach. And then you have the Sydney Opera House, which is the second time I've seen it in a movie. So I hope that movies don't use it too often because then it's going to become a little bit repetitive. But I guess it is a nice break from having everything based in Los Angeles and being so familiar with that landscape or having movies filmed in New York so many times. We just kind of get used to that. But I feel like Australia is just so distinct and you have to have a real reason to go out there and put your characters there. So I'm curious to see how many more movies are going to be filmed and based in Australia because of those tax incentives. But the movie debuted at $28.5 million in the United States, made about $65 million at the global box office. I think is a little bit under what they were expecting this movie to do with having two big stars as Ryan Gosling and Emily Blunt. It's about 50% down from last year whenever Guardians of the Galaxy 3 came out. So maybe not the biggest start to the summer blockbuster season, which I feel like May is a little bit too early for me to really feel like it's summer blockbuster season. I really get that feeling more at the start of June or that very last weekend of May feels like the kickoff to me. But comparing it to last year, I feel like, yeah, it's a little bit down. But it cost about $125 million to make, not including advertising. So I think and hope this movie will end up making some money given the word of mouth of it, because it is a fun movie. It has that summer blockbuster feel, but a little bit of a different taste that we haven't had before. And I think David Leach is that kind of director who is not here to make the same movie again and again. And I will say, my favorite character out of the entire movie is the dog. So for The Fall Guy, I give it four out of five car flips.